Shaitan here, bringing you another grand game from Stefano, this time between the blue Zerg Stefano in the top left corner, and the red Protoss White Raw um, in the bottom right corner. The map is Nezarim Crypts, or Nerezim, Nerezim Crypts. It's part of the ladder pool, but not part of really any major tournament. It's an interesting map. Uh, there, The natural is fairly easy to wall off and defend in the early game. You can see that the rocks are here narrowing the choke, so you can do a forge fast expansion as a Protoss player fairly easily. However, as a Zerg player, your third is very, very close. There's just one ramp leading into it, so it's not like it can suffer from too many avenues of act like defense that you have to do, and it's fairly close to your natural, so we'll see what each player opts to do. Uh, White Raw opting for an in-base first pylon, so it doesn't look like he's going for a forge fast expand. I'm kind of curious why not. The map architecture really seems to favor it, but we'll see. Maybe White Raw has something special planned for us. Uh, Stefano, meanwhile, is up to 14 drones. We'll see if he makes the 15th on um, what he's going to go for, whether it is a uh, early spawning, or whether it's a spawning pool first or a hatchery first. He is up to 15 drones. It looks like he's going to go for the spawning pool first, just to be absolutely safe against any sort of cannon shenanigans. This is a blizzard map, so of course there are no sub neutral supply depots here, which means you can do a, I think it would be a three pylon block of this ramp. Might be even only two, but we'll see. Um, oddly enough, White Draw has built his second pylon down here. And his building is forged at 16, so it looks like it's going to be a delayed forge fast expand. I've actually, I've actually never seen this opening before, so uh, you'll just have to learn it right along with me. It looks like on this map, the rush distances are very large, and with a late scout, I think you can be almost assured that a Zerg player is going to try to get this hatchery down fairly early, so getting this forge a little bit later uh, is probably fairly safe. Uh, I think White Raw would adjust his build if he went in and he saw that there was no hatchery here. Uh, if he saw instead that the, there was a pool already done with maybe metabolic speed upgrading, he wouldn't drop the Nexus first. He'd probably have waited, dropped this photon cannon, and maybe walled off completely here just to be absolutely safe against any sort of Zergling attack. But uh, Stefano has opted for the macro game, so White Raw can feel comfortable dropping this Nexus. It isn't too far behind his opponent, only about 20 in-game seconds, so he should feel pretty comfortable with uh, his own build. And uh, I was talking about this third base that uh, is very easy for a Zerg player to take. We do see Stefano is actually getting prepared to take it right now. This is more in line with what the current metagame is in PvZ, where uh, you see that players opt for the very, very early third base with only about 25 food maximum, pretty much. Interestingly enough, though, uh, Stefano doesn't know what White Raw has. He just knows that he is in this bottom right corner. He doesn't know if he's going for a Forge Fast expansion. He could be foregating for all he knows, and yet he is taking this very, very fast third. If White Raw foregated in about 45 seconds, uh, a little bit longer, actually, um, there would be a massive influx of pressure from White Raw, and I don't think that Stefano would hold, but I think it's pretty safe to assume that a uh, forge fast expand, some type of early expand build is really the go-to build as a Protoss player, so this expansion should be fairly safe, and we see that Stefano is being active with his uh, early lings, making sure that this probe cannot drop a pylon, cannot do any sort of early cannon rush on this third base, which would shut it down, as Stefano really doesn't have all that many units to defend. So, one thing that I've noted before with Stefano's play is he traditionally gets a pretty fast gas after he gets his first expansion and delays this third expansion until right about now, whereas we see this time it's going to finish about the time he would be dropping his third normally with that build. I'm curious to see what sort of... how 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 much Stefano can power behind this build, if he's going to get up to almost ret levels of drones, or if he's going to continue to almost hold even with the Protoss player in economy, which is what I've noticed observing some of his earlier games. He should be dropping an Evo Chamber very, very soon, just to deal with a potential Stargate uh, follow-up from the Protoss player, and we see that White Draw is actually dropping a Stargate. He's positioned the Stargate right here. I'm not sure if a Zergling running up would see that or not. I know this Overlord, if it decided to come in, would be able to very easily spot the uh, Stargate, but really with one Stargate, he should Stefano should be pretty safe. We see he has gotten two of his exasses already. He's getting a third at his natural, and uh, 
really, um, I think he should be dropping that uh, Evo Chamber very, very soon. Right now, uh, a spawning, a Stargate Pressure or DTs, both of which are uh, very popular follow-ups after this Forge Fast Expand, can be devastating without the Spore Callers there to defend. And we do see that the Evolution Chamber is down. And it looks like White Raw is going to be making Phoenixes out of his Stargate. Probably just going to take some air control. He's going to be able to clear out any of these overlords that are really out. We'll see what Stefano actually sees. He does see the uh, wall off now, so he can be sure of what White of us what White Raw is doing in terms of having this expansion. But really White Raw is going to be able to use these Phoenixes to clear out the overlords here, probably this other one, if White Raw can scout it, and uh, then really develop into a different type of army. It's very hard for Phoenixes to actually win you the game because they don't hit ground. Uh, they can pick up stuff on the ground, but it's hard to pick up a hatchery. So without some type of ground army, there's really no way to win the game with Phoenixes if you just set your opponent back far enough to where your follow-up attack will be able to kill them. We do see a very nice amount of drones from Stefano. He's already up to 61 drones, and this is really the advantage of this early third base, and a delaying of your gases gives you... We actually see that Stefano is taking the fourth base already, and White Raw really has no idea about this. Um, I'd like to see a bit more presence on the map, maybe sending some... Uh, Zergling, or sorry, some probes around because uh, Stefano still does not have speed. He is getting some roaches. He's powering up, getting about 15 or 16 roaches with plus one missile attack and a glial red constitution. So he should be prepared for any sort of pressure, gateway pressure that would be hitting around nine or ten minutes. Um, but once these phoenixes pop out, which White Draw, or Stefano is again defended against with this four color and the queen, uh, he should feel fairly comfortable droning up a little bit more. Uh, this queen is going to get taken out just because of its positioning. It wasn't really all that close to the score crawler, and that's going to allow these uh, phoenixes to knock out a couple of drones, but he needs to be careful. He, oh, poor White Rod there actually lost one phoenix kind of needlessly. He does replenish it, but he'd be up to five phoenixes now instead of four. Nice creep spreads from Stefano. It is spreading out to uh, extend basically his quarter of the map, and we see that Stefano is moving out right now to see if the third base is being taken, but it looks like instead White Rod is going to take this third base. Not really sure why. It's very easy to defend this third just because you really only have to defend this area right here, which is a lot easier than all of this area, which is what uh, White Rod is going to be forced to do now. We see the Phoenixes are continuing to move around. They're taking out Overlords as they can, and the units lost that we see that Stefano has lost about twice as many units, but remember, they're really just Overlords. He's still up to 71 drones versus the 60 um, probes of his opponent, so he should feel comfortable. And with this four caller and the Queen, he should be feeling okay about how it's going. White Raw has only killed seven drones, so it's really not that big of a deal. We do see that he's taken this third base, and Stefano really has no idea that it's there. I think he's preparing, uh, he's expecting a third base here, and we see that the fourth base is now spotted by White Draw. He's able to do a little bit of damage, but the two spore crawlers are going to drive him off. Stefano is getting a spore, a, sp a spire, rather, sorry. It's halfway done. We'll see. I'm, I would be expecting him to do some corruptors just so he can take out the phoenixes and then maybe do a quick switch over to uh, Mutalist to be able to harass the main natural and third of White Raw, but we'll really see. There's a little bit of an engagement here. Stefano is going to end up losing basically all of his roaches if White Raw recognizes it and engages. He is picking up a roach or two, and he's now up to, it looks like, seven phoenixes, so he'll be able to do a significant amount of damage. But White Raw, Stefano um, actually really has very little idea of what's going on in his base, and he's sort of going this blind spire just to be prepared for Colossi. He doesn't see any... Um, which doesn't mean that he can't, that uh, White Rock couldn't be hiding them, and he's actually built this hiding list then too. I think Stefano really needs to improve his uh, scouting. There's really no reason not to get this pneumatized carapace and just go in and see what your opponent does, because White Ro Stefano fortunately is lucking onto the right build. He's making, oh, I spoke too soon, he's making these corruptors in anticipation of the colossi that aren't there, but really if he was uh, scouting a little bit more thoroughly, he'd be able to recognize that really Hydra Roach is the appropriate response to this army just because it's going to be able to rip through this gateway heavy army with a little bit of immortal support uh, as the Hydralists just do so much damage so quickly and plus two, plus one will be done for him very soon against the plus one, um, plus zero of uh, White Raw. Uh, White Raw, really, he's playing almost too passively. We see that he has, at a very nice economy, 77 uh, probes against the 83 drones of Stefano, but really there's no there's no oomph to his army. He just has these phoenixes and the gateway units, but he needs some type of AoE to be able to deal with the swarm. Either, oh, and this poor immortal is probably going to get picked up, but he really needs uh, Colossi or Templar in some way just to be able to deal with this army cost-effectively. Because these roaches are supply and efficient, they rely on just sheer numbers to be able to power through uh, any sort of army they run into. I think Stefano would actually feel 
uh, pretty would be pretty able to take Ace of Space, or at least a macro hatchery somewhere would be uh, nice. But it doesn't look like he's doing so, and he's actually doing fine on um, his macros. Uh, resources are low, and he's able to maintain production almost constantly. We do see 25 roaches and 90, 20 uh, hydras basically engaging uh, piecemeal, though. Hydras aren't really heading over. I don't like this engagement from Stefano. He's losing a lot of his units. He is able to take out a couple of the phoenixes. They're going to pick off this overseer, which is a little unfortunate, but he's able to whittle down the shields of the uh, phoenixes, and it looks like Stefano is going to lose most of his army, but he's now rebuilding 17 roaches, 3 more hydralists, so he'll be up to about 10 hydras, 13 or so uh, roaches, and that should be more than enough to defeat the remaining army of White Draw. White Draw, on the other hand, is floating um, up to about 800 minerals, and it looks like he actually has the ability to warp in, but he's just a little bit low on gas, it appears, because he's only mining. No, he's mining from the free gas, so it's a little bit odd. We see another engagement right now. The Phoenixes are continuing to get picked off. They aren't that effective against the Corruptors, just because the Corruptors are armored, and the Phoenix do extra damage against light, and it looks like Stefano, if not... I'm um, going to be able to break through White Draw's army with this attack. It looks like the next one will be effective and in, in breaking White Draw. And I think once White Draw loses this third base, he's going to be forced to GG. In the meantime, we see that Stefano is taking a fifth base right here and a macro hatchery going down at the third. So he's going to be prepared for the follow-up. I'd like for him to drop some sort of infestation pit just to be prepared for the late game, just in case somehow uh, White Rock can't hold it off, and just like that, the infestation pit goes down. He's getting plus one flyer attacks, just so these corruptors are more than prepared uh, for dealing with any sort of phoenixes, and I think White Draw really needs a uh, Colossi just for this reason. He'd be able to rip through this Hydralist army of Stefano, but alas, the Hydra Colossi are not there. He doesn't even have the Robo Bay up, so it looks like Stefano is going to take this Nexus out very, very quickly, defeat the army, and that should be GG from White Rock. Really, White Rod just made a bit of a blunder in not taking up to any sort of AoE against the uh, army of his opponent very quickly. And uh, really, Stefano was able to capitalize on that. And if we look right now, just sort of to point out, Stefano still has no idea what White Raw has in his base. And I can't help but to think that he just got a little lucky in that his opponent did not go for the Colossus, because a Colossus army would be able to deal with the heavy Roach Hydra army very, very effectively. But, fortunately, Stefano was able to come away with the win.